got a very interesting show. So much is happening. Things are moving so fast. Recording Criminal in progress. justice reform is becoming the order of the day. Everyone is putting their hand in it as if they are a piece of cloth trying to bring together a blanket that can help turn the tide on senseless violence. But one of the things I want to let you know, because you know who I am, that this show is put together with the blessing and with me being obedient to the producer of this show. And she's also the chairman of United in Peace Inc., none other than my wife, Terry Marsh. And the technical works that's happening with the show is by Brother Omari. Got a special guest here for you. And uh, very special. Not just because she happened to be an African American woman. I don't want y'all to say Gator is biased. I think everybody is special, 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 special. But we got Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox, on the show tonight. And with that, I want to say to God be the glory. Kim, could you come in and tell all my viewing audience that don't know you? Because you look marvelous with your hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Hey, and tell your husband, I don't mean nothing. He'll probably tell you that the same, the same thing. <laughs> so, without further ado, Kim Fox, can you come on and introduce yourself? And let yes. Me, okay. So, so glad to be back with you uh, and your audience. Thank you for having me, Gator. I am Kim Fox. I'm a Cook County State's Attorney. I've been in office since December 2016, re-elected. Uh, this past November, so I'm, I'm seven months into my second term, and I am responsible for the prosecutor's office here in Cook County, um, and so we handle all uh, prosecutions of crime, as well as representing the County of Cook in civil litigation, and it is an honor and a pleasure to serve in my hometown. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I grew up in this city, um, in the Cabrini Green neighborhood back in the 70s and 80s, and so you know, as we talk about the violence that's happening in our communities today, uh, it feels eerily reminiscent to a time in our past. Um, and I'm hoping that we can learn the lessons from that time as we seek peace in our communities today. You know, uh, Kim, the governor, J.B. Prisca, I know he made his announcement. So for our viewing audience. I know you heard me being, and I told you on my show, constructive criticism. I believe the only way I can help a candidate who I help to become that elected official in order to service the people is to let him know what I'm hearing from the people to help make him a better governor. Well, what he's done this week, he signed some very interesting bills in the term of criminal justice reform as well as the cannabis law that they get together. Uh, could you please tell our audience, because it's your audience as well as it's mine, mm -hmm. your input and the legislation of the bills dealing with the criminal justice reform. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and and uh, as I was saying earlier, it amazed me that it's that old saying, you thought you was out of it and they pulled you back in. You know, uh, so far the audience don't understand what I'm saying. Um, a while ago, uh, State's Attorney Kim Fox, I wrote a letter to let everyone know that she was not going to have any uh, input or make any decision with the prisoner review board. And I understand that. You know what I mean? Okay. And maybe it was because I'm just being, just what's my opinion? It may have been that you felt that some people may have served enough of their time and whatever. And then here come the wonderful legislation. <laughs> I guess you and the legislators must have had a conversation on what can be done, right? Because y'all listening to the people. 
So could you explain how this legislation came about that the governor signed with criminal justice reform and the resentencing? Yeah, so thank you for that. We worked um, with uh, the state legislators uh, to craft this bill that was signed the other day that allows for prosecutors to go back and review or and ask for a different sentence for someone who was sentenced previously. And we do that in the interest of justice. And part of that is we've grown as a, as a country, as we've looked at uh, incarceration, particularly mass incarceration, and a lot of the sentences that people got in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, aren't the same sentences that people would get today. And so, like, for example, when you talk about marijuana, marijuana was just legalized in Illinois, for example, in 2020. But we knew people who went to prison or who may have still be serving time for offenses related to marijuana, even though it's now legal. So no one's going to go to jail for marijuana now. But what about the person who was convicted in 1999 mm -hmm. or the person convicted in 2000? What is the relief for them? And so it was important to me, this was legislation that our office pushed, um, that we asked uh, for help down in Springfield, that we were given an opportunity to be able to go revisit sentences and be able to say, look, this sentence is not in the interest of justice. This is someone who, if they were found guilty today, would not have to serve this much time. And this is different than going to the prison review board, asking for parole. This is different from clemency. This is our petition saying that they've, this, it's enough. We've done enough. And the reason that we have pulled out of going to the prison review board is because you know this, Gator, our office historically was just objecting to right. people who had done their time, right? We would just say, you know what? Nope, based on what the original instance was, incident was, the original crime, we're just going to always object. And that wasn't right. You had prison guards, you had you know, people who work in, in the prison, people who work in the community, people who love them, who would write these letters and tell the whole story about who the person was. And our office would object. And the prison review board, some members, so long as the state's attorney objected, they felt comfortable in rejecting parole. And so what we said at that time was, take us out of that process. Right. We're not going to object. We want you to look at the records. We want you to look at everything and you make that determination. So they're still doing that at the uh, prison review board. But this is another layer having prosecutors go in and say, in the interest of justice, this person needs to be resentenced. And in many of those cases, it may be time served mm -hmm. so that those people can come out and, and get back on with their lives. You know, I've been getting calls from lawyers, mm -hmm. and they've been calling me. I guess they call me because I'm the urban translator. You know, they know the legal ease, you know, but what do, you, what do you think? And I'm glad you made mention of that because, as my audience know, I'm a former inmate. I got a pardon by Governor Jim Thompson. He was a Republican. But it was because the state's attorney had told his assistant state's attorney that was objecting because that assistant state's attorney whole platform was anti-gang member and no redemption or none of that. And the state's attorney at that time was Cecil Partee. Mm. So Cecil Party had me, had a guy come to the phone in the hallway and he talked to him and he sent him a uh, fax for him to go in and read before the board said that he had no objection. Mm. And the rest is history. Mm. What the lawyers want to know is what's the protocol if they feel that uh, who they may be representing, okay, whether it's uh, in a post-conviction piece or whatever it is. Now that this has became the law of the land, do they, uh, what's the protocol? Do they write to the state's attorney's office their concern? Well, could you explain that for me? Yeah, so the way that the law is set up is that only state's attorneys can go in and ask for someone to be resentenced. And so there was a lot of talk about having people petition the courts directly so you didn't have to go through the state's attorney. Uh, but ultimately what we were able to get consensus around or get everybody to agree was having to go through the state's attorney. 
So starting January 1st is when the law will take effect. Mm -hmm. um, we will have built out in our office what we would call our resentencing unit, uh, okay. which will have lawyers in that unit who will be able to take uh, those applications, if you will. And we're, we're building that out for us to be able to see, you know, what the person is charged with, what, you know, give us, it's almost like pardons and clemency. What's been their record in prison? You know, what is it that, that, that you can tell us that we know um, that this person deserves to be out and able to do like you've done, Gator, contribute uh -huh. to the community in, in, in many ways. And so there will be a process that comes through our office uh, that we will fully flesh out. We'll have an application so that people will, will have one place to go um, and know with some transparency how we make those decisions to, to do that. In the meantime, we've done it ad hoc. We've done, you know, we did a case a couple months ago where a young woman back when she was 21 had become overwhelmed, um, having just given birth to a baby, mm -hmm. had other children, had some mental health issues. Um, and, you know, her baby, you know, she, her, she killed her baby. Um, and it was related to postpartum it was related you know we were able to piece together mm -hmm. um, that this woman had these issues that she wasn't some cold-hearted killer who was out there doing this harm and she'd served almost 20 years in prison and her other children were petitioning for her her family was saying that she had a place to go and we went into court um, and was able to get her out and get her resentenced and mm -hmm. so you know, we want to make sure people know that it's not just, we're not just talking about drug crimes. We, we understand that if we're going to do this, we're going to be looking at all kinds of crimes, you know, mm -hmm. even crimes that involve, um, you know, victims. And we want to work with our victims uh, witness unit, you know, to be in touch with people who have been harmed as we do this process so that they know what's happening, if they have any feelings and opinions, but it's across the board. So we're, we're looking at all cases. Uh, for us to be able to come back and revisit. But there'll be a unit within our office that they could reach out to our office um, and, and we will have a process in place. I'm glad you made mention of the day that will go into effect. So audience, y'all heard, mm -hmm. January 1st of 2022. Yes. Now don't go out there and get drunk. And, commit, yeah. and, 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 and don't go out there Yep. And get drunk on New Year's Eve and do something you ain't got no business. And before you go to trial, you want to try to hire your lawyer put in yeah, for the process. Hard. I'm just joking. You know what yeah, I mean? But I'm just you saying. Know, you got to make it, make it plain. That ain't well, how it works. Make it plain. Work. It's uh, called so transparency. <laughs> we give it transparency. That's not how it works. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and for the individuals that have uh, Old cannabis cases, you know, I'm old school. Marijuana cases, pot cases, reefer cases. Yeah. Okay, there's something that's already in play. Because I said in the courtroom, when you yourself spoke to the judge, mm -hmm. that there was Judge Jim Evans, the chief judge, mm -hmm. right? That was so wonderful. Uh, could you elaborate on that? Uh, what you did yep. to show so individuals know that there's a mechanism already in place if you got a former of, uh, old case that you're trying to get expunged or trying to get the pardon for the old case that is dealing with cannabis, marijuana, reefer, whatever you call it, however way you old, could you explain that to him? <laughs> yes, I swear for your urban translation. Right. Weed, marijuana, reefer. Hot. Um, when cannabis became legal in Illinois in January 1st, 2020, part of the legislation, and again, this was legislation that we helped draft, was for us to be able to vacate the convictions of people who were previously found guilty for amounts that would now be legal. Because that's not fair. It's not fair that if you, you know, again, like I said earlier, were found guilty in 19 or, two, or 2019 for something that's now legal. So what we've done is we've worked with a group called Code for America, which is a tech company that was able to go through all of the records from the Illinois State Police to identify people within the state of Illinois, particularly Cook County, who had previously been arrested, charged, and convicted for marijuana cases 
for 30 grams or below. Now that's the legal amount in Illinois now is 30 mm. grams. And so they then give us that information. And what we did was we went into court on behalf of that person, on behalf of that defendant and asked the court to vacate that conviction. So that means that, that if you pled guilty, were found guilty, that guilty plea, that guilty finding is now vacated. It is though that case didn't exist. And then we're expunging the records. And you don't have to pay for that. Generally with expungements, you know, you have to pay a fee. You have to get a lawyer. We're doing this automatically. And we're sending you, once we vacate your, your conviction, a letter in the mail to let you know that it's done. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason we're doing it this way, and this was before the pandemic. So I should tell you that we've had to slow down considerably right. uh, because of the pandemic. But we didn't want people to have to petition, you know, people, you know, we were trying to, because we're going all the way back. I think our oldest case that we identified was from 1969. Mm. Um, so any case between then and 2020 um, will be uh, ex vacated and expunged. And so we go to court. I went to court back in December yeah. of 2019 uh, mm -hmm. with Governor Fritzker by mm -hmm. my side. He mm -hmm. sat in the courtroom that you sat in yeah. and named off the first, I personally named off the first hundred people whose convictions were going to be vacated. Um, right now, I think we have 3,500 cases uh, in Cook County that we've done so far. Uh, statewide, the records are being expunged. Uh, so if you got an arrest but never came into court, that arrest record is being expunged. And I believe the governor's office has indicated that they've done almost 50,000 of those expungements. Mm. So our goal is to be able to get through all of these cases within the next several months. You know, that's fascinating. And the reason I'm saying that because this show is also going to be a YouTube link and we're going to be sending out through social media to everyone and asking everyone to send it out and share it out. If they can do a TikTok or whatever it is to get it out because it's a new movement of communication that I'm seeing. In the 60s and the 70s, it was, it was the drum beats. Bam, bam, bam. That's what our ancestors communicated with the drums. Bam, bam, bam. Now, it's telegram through Instagram, <laughs> telephone, and tell a Negro. And going for everybody to get out. What I mean by tell a Negro, we talk about going to the bars, going to yeah. the barbershop, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, yeah. Being at the baseball game. At a hen party, hen parties are different, brothers, because when the women get together, when they having conversations and talking about a bake sale, they come out with a plan to make life better. That's how this public safety is going to work, because the women are empowered to change something, because they see, in my opinion, because they see it differently, because they're giving birth. When they see one child get killed senselessly. I know it touches them because it touches my wife, my daughter. It touches them different because they feel it within their body. The pain that every mother feels when their child get killed. Brothers are now coming around and understanding that pain through when the woman say, hey, I, I, I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear nothing. Because she heard herself scream as she was giving birth. And now it's a certain different type of scream now that the children is gone. And that's the reason that all the brothers said, hey, Gator, how can we help our sisters to help turn this tide and the violence without getting locked up under the RICO? And I said, we got to show them that we as fathers or as dads or as mentors got a right to support the code on behalf of the women. And so if you're coming in late and you didn't catch the show at the top of the show, the code is this. Senseless shootings and killings, mm -hmm. the rape and the abuse of women and children, the abuse and the robbery and the disrespect of our elders, which are our seniors, is non excusable. Can't apologize for it. Is not tolerated. If you catch a case because you're out there hustling, I'm not uh, 
uh, justifying any criminal activity. I'm just saying it's encompassing on us. Uh, helping you to get you a good lawyer. And you got to make this choice. Not to be in that business anymore. So that's the code. And everyone that's listening. Y'all can tell your friends. Whether you're at the barbershop. Getting a manicure, pedicure. Whatever it is that you're doing. Hey. This code is serious. It's meaningful. This code is more profound and is on the women in Shyrock on steroids. I'll put it that way. When they say it's going to be some peace or there ain't no peace, mm -hmm. this is what we got to do. Because every week we having mass shootings in our community and that's a terrorist act. One shooting of an innocent child. You know, so because normally, uh, Kim, I usually have the introduction about the code, showing how the children died and all of that. But since we're doing this Zoom, and it was very important that you explain what is happening, what you are doing, not as a law enforcement official, but as a parent, as an African American, you know what I mean, as a legislator. And just like I'm doing as an urban translator to get out there to share the conversation. And Kim, by the way, I just became a recipient for the uh, 2121, no, 2021 uh, edition of the uh, Worldwide Who's Who. So everybody, if you don't know me, boy, I'm that man now. <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> We got to do what we got to do. We laugh sometimes to keep from crying. You know, mm -hmm. um, I have to wrap it up because I know she got to move and everything else. And uh, yeah, I know both our mothers not here. Mm -hmm. But I do know they're looking down on us. And you knew that because you said that you get your, get your, pretty, your pretty face off. You know? <laughs> hey, tell your family, I love honor and respect them unconditionally unapologetically and I got to wrap it up and y'all know how I do what I do uh, Kim have you got some last words you want to chime in no I just want to say thank you for sharing the audience with me and uh, your point is well taken we got to reclaim our streets and it, it requires before law enforcement gets in our communities to say that the code has to be respected and you know, I grew up under that code. It's how I'm able yeah. to have been able to be a lawyer today is because people knew that you protected children and the elders. And the, every every time I see the number of children who are shot from infants to teenagers, to it, it, it breaks my heart. We got to we got to come together. We got to work together. And, right. and our trust in law enforcement, I'm here with us, uh, with you to be able to find solutions that are community based. Um, and it's why I love being on the show. Hey. With you, Gabe. Thank you. you Thank you, Kim. Hey, you the first one to land, and I've been talking to other elected officials. They heard you, and you. I'm telling my viewing audience, you're going to hear it from the president to our governor to our county board president to our mayor to our legislators to our aldermen to the state's attorney, to the superintendent, the fraternity, the sororities, Masonic orders, business people, they all going to come with that. And we as a people, be us parents, uncles, aunties, sisters and brothers, got to support it too, because it can work. And this is not an experiment, this is a solution. And with that, I want to say, thank you, Kim. I want to tell your staff, I thank them. It was on it so fast, the wife thought it was a bill collector calling me. <laughs> hey, y'all know the food. Right, right. Here. It's just us. We're, yeah. grateful. We're grateful for the platform. Thank you. Okay. With that, I want to say to God be the glory. Y'all heard our story. And we can do what we got to do to save our babies, our elders, and our community. Thank you.